For those of you who aren't normals here, this is a participatory time. So if you sit quietly, it will go very long. Okay? There's your warning. So, what are you thankful for? The freedom of, who said that? The freedom of worship. My family. Your family. A roof over our heads. Somebody said something in here, I heard it. Was it Christopher? What did you say? Parents. Parents. I like that. Oh. <laughs> what does he want? <laughs> what does he want? <laughs> What else are you thankful for? Food. Jesus. Health. Forgiveness. Your mom and dad. Freedom of speech. Grandchildren. God. See, you're fired. You didn't say that first. It was Clyde's job to say that. That's what I'm saying. He's fired. (laughs) Right? We're thankful for so many things. But why are we thankful for them? What's the reason we can be thankful? Salvation. Salvation. Salvation from what? This is an interesting post one of my friends posted on Facebook the other day. Why are we saved and what are we saved from? More, what are we saved from? Right? Christians say we're saved, we have salvation. But why do we have salvation? What is, what are we saved from? Hell? Our, ooh. Ourselves. Ourselves. Are you saved from yourself though? (laughs) See, this is, this is very participatory. I like this. I should make that announcement on Sunday mornings. We are saved from, and my friend on Facebook posted, which I re- retaliated. What was somebody? There's something. What? The consequence of sin. The consequence of sin, which is um, the 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 punishment of a wrathful God, is what we're saved from. And my my response to him was eternal separation from God, or a separation from the eternal love of God. Right? That's what we're saved from. We're saved from separation from God. But why were these people following after Jesus today? Jesus said it very plainly. This is one time that he said it very plainly. Because they got their fill of bread. They got food and they got satisfied with what Jesus had given them. And they were following him not for what he could give them spiritually, but for what he could give them physically. They were looking to have their physical needs met. How many of us here struggle with that? Honestly? You struggle with having your physical needs met? Work is a struggle. (laughs) Well, but I mean, in the whole grand scheme of things, do do we as people in this country struggle to have our physical needs met? The majority of the people here probably have, as someone was thankful for, a roof over your head. You probably have running water. You have an indoor um, facility to use. You don't have to go outside to find a tree. You have clothes to wear that's not the same set of clothes that you wore yesterday unless you so choose to do that. Right? We have food. And we have more food than we need to eat right now. We have refrigerators and cupboards full of food, right? So we don't struggle to have our physical needs met. That's why these people were following after Jesus, because they didn't have what they needed physically. And he fed them. And he told them 
That the reason that they kept coming after him was not because of what he could give them spiritually, but because what they, he was giving them physically. And they needed to get over that hump of wanting the physical to seeking after the spiritual. Because that's really what we have to be thankful for. Because if we truly believe that Jesus is who he says he is, then we will never thirst and never hunger again. Do you believe that? Does that mean physical hunger? Because, I don't know about you, I ate dinner about two hours ago, and I actually am hungry right now. Right? I think I smelled the pie, actually. <laughs> There was a blueberry thing down there. I think it's blueberries. It looked really good. Right? So I'm hungry. And actually, I'm hungry spiritually, too. That's the thing that I don't really get about this is because Jesus said, if we believe that he is the bread of life and whoever follows after him will never hunger or never thirst. But isn't that really what happens if you follow after Jesus and you get a little taste and you get a little drink? All you want is more. More. Because it does what? What does it do? It satisfies you. What else does it do? It makes you feel good about life, people. It's comforting. It fills you up to where you're Your cup runs, who said that? Your cup runs over, right? It fills you up. Jesus fills you up so much that you are overflowing. And that flows out into other people's lives. It's as if, as, it's as if we are this, right? You're a pitcher. I'm going to ask these two over here in a minute if you're actually a pitcher. It's a pitcher. And Jesus fills us up. And we can empty ourselves out. Doug's not here, right? We can empty ourselves out. And, and Jesus, there's nothing in there. And Jesus would, would fill it up again. Right? But we're not a pitcher. We're not a cup. We're not a what? A drink dispenser. What are we? You're not confirmed anymore. What are we? You are... You're a straight two, a straight feed from God to other people because God pours it into your life and it funnels straight down through you out into the world because that's what God called you to be. And that's why God brought you into this place. And that's why God said that if you follow after me, you will never hunger or thirst again because I will give you everything that you need, everything that you can be thankful for because that's why I brought you here. So that you can be a conduit, a tube, a pipe of my love, grace, and mercy to all the world. So he feeds directly through you out into the world. And that's why we can make a joyful noise, which you guys haven't heard this yet, but it's not a noise. It's a beautiful celebration. <laughs> We're stealing some people, by the way. <laughs> we'll work out a deal. <laughs> Maybe we can, we'll change our service time so we can share them. How about that? We'll work that out. That's why we can make a joyful noise. That's why we can do as Paul tells the Philippians, to rejoice always, to always be in prayer, to always be thankful for everything that we've been given, because God is always going to continually to fill us up. And that, my friends, is why we can be truly thankful. Because God has promised that He'll never leave us nor forsake us. And that any time that we're in need, that He will be there. And He will work through his Himself. And He will work through His body. And not just our local body, but the body of all those gathered here tonight. And the body of all of those people from our congregations. And the body of all believers all across this country and all across this world. Because we are God's body. We are Jesus' hands and feet. He wants to use you. 
And if there's no other reason to be thankful, that is it. Because God loves each and every one of us so much that He promised to always fill us back up. To go out into the world to share that love with everyone. So let us be thankful and let us go and show the world how much He loves them.